I started looking at Ephesians 4, where it says he gave the apostles, prophets, evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. God says he gives these different gifted people to the church for the reason to equip the saints for the work of ministry. Why are there leaders in the church? Why are there these gifted leaders in the church? It's not so that they can perform for you. Their job is to equip you for the work. Back to David's question. I, it was really wordy, so I don't remember it all. But basically, like, do you believe that you could, you know, make disciples and plant churches without the, the uh, performance or the program or the professional? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, but no, but, but did you take that to heart? Because we're very good at, you know, in our gatherings to go, oh, that was very convicting. Oh yeah, touched my heart. Well, what, what's actually gonna change? Are you gonna walk out of here and go, no, I can actually make disciples. I can literally gather people together without any professionals. I've got the Holy Spirit, I've got the word of God. Like, do you have that confidence? Like, that's what God wants in you. Like, we're supposed to equip you for that. I mean, we all know churches in America are way too consumer driven. We know that, right? Everyone complains about that. But who's going to change that? Who's going to say, well, then I'll, I'll start changing that. I'll start gathering people together just to pray because I can do that. I don't need a performance. I don't need a program. I don't need a professional. What a thrill to get together with everyday people and come before a holy God and expect him to work through us and expect him to make us one, to become perfectly one. You know, the Bible says in, uh, in 1 Corinthians, uh, you guys know these passages. I'm not telling, again, I'm not pointing out like obscure thoughts that no one ever thought about. Love God, love one another. Um, whoa, profound. You know, like 1 Corinthians 12, it says, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To each is given. You were given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit for the common good. Because, you know, when I ask my church, you know, I go, hey, do you want these spiritual gifts because you want the spiritual gifts? Or do you want these spiritual gifts because you love the church? And all week long, you've loved us. So you're going, God, give me a gift so that I can bless them. Manifest through me because you said that you would manifest through me for their good. I love them so much and I want them to be so close to you. So you've got to start working through me so that I can be a blessing to them and I can draw them deeper into your glory. Like, is that your prayer during the week? And so that when you show up to a gathering, you're like, okay, I'm prayed up. I've got something to give. In fact, the Spirit says, the Holy Spirit, the, the Holy Scriptures say, that I've been given a man. I mean, think about that. The manifest, the Holy Spirit of God. For example, what if, what if right now I got possessed by a demon? Okay, I mean, it's not gonna happen, but let's just say, let's just say I get possessed by a demon right now. And I just, he just controls me and I just say and do the most insane things. Save me, thank you. You, would you walk away and go, wow, that was memorable, right? You're not gonna forget that like you will David's questions. You, 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 you'll, right? You'll walk away and go, oh my gosh, you know, I just witnessed something 
the de a demon possessed Francis Chan. Okay, right? Let me ask you something then. What if the Holy Spirit possessed me and manifested through me? Shouldn't it be equally, if not more shocking, that the Spirit of God would manifest through me for the common good? And shouldn't there be just a change that happens at the core of your being? Because it wasn't me who was speaking. And so it wasn't eloquent speech or superior wisdom, but it was the power of the Spirit, a demonstration of the Spirit, a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Shouldn't that be at least be equal to what a demon could do right so do you believe that about yourself my god this is possible this is promised god i have something in me for the common good i'm not supposed to just go and sit and listen week after week after week and complain about how the message wasn't deep enough the music wasn't my style uh the kids program teach you know it's like really you guys when we don't equip you and release you you miss out on the manifestation of the spirit is there anything more amazing than that I mean, that's why I still enjoy speaking, teaching, anything in ministry, just for the chance. I go, okay, God, this time, could it really be you? Could it really be your spirit manifesting through me to where there's a real change inside of your heart? To where it's like the deep calling out to deep and you're just like, no, I believe that. Like, I want that. I'm seeking that. I'm believing for that. That's what God, that's what would please him is if all of you believed. You want to please him tonight? Then believe. Believe that the Holy Spirit wants to manifest through you for the common good, for the church. You are a blessing. You're a gift. And this is not just some gift that any unbeliever could do. This is something supernatural. This is from the Spirit of God. We've got to take these words literally. I was reading... I don't have time for that. Okay. I was reading though. The the other, um, you know, the other thing. So so here, the, these are, again, these are things that I'm just going, this seems like the most obvious stuff. We're supposed to equip the saints for the work of service. People should be mature and going out there and manifesting the Holy Spirit and blessing one another. And I'm not seeing that. I'm, people, I'm seeing people show up week after week wanting to just take, take, take and complain when they don't get enough rather than realizing I've got a crazy gift and I'm going to use it and bless other people. I'm not seeing people gathering and seeking to be perfectly one so that the world would believe. I'm not even hearing people talk about an affection for Jesus like they really mean it. And so if that's not happening, why do we think every time we gather, oh, God's so pleased. These are the things he says that are dear to his heart. Everything that, that Andrew and, and David were talking about, about how we're called to be these missionaries. Man, that's what we're training up is people that, that, that just love the glory of God and want to get his glory to the nations. Man, is that what we're doing? We're, instead, it just feels like we're trying to collect people rather than send them out. Man, and I remember, I remember as a new pastor, I went to like a church growth thing and uh, the pastor up front was talking about their Christmas musical and how they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and four to six months of rehearsal. And, and he was just saying, man, people from the church would come and rehearse about six, six hours a week for like four months straight. I mean, they were committed. And then when we had this musical, man, we had all these visitors come and, and man, that's great stuff. But I went up to him after, and I was a new pastor at the time, so I'm like, hey, just a question, like, those guys that came to the church building for like four or six hours a week and for four to six months, like, if they just stayed in their neighborhood and talked to their neighbors and invite them to dinner and told them about Jesus, wouldn't that have accomplished a lot more and wouldn't it have been free? And I seriously asked that, you know? And the pastor looked at me, he goes, well, of course. 
people aren't willing to do that. And I go, oh yeah, that's true. I mean, that, that's what I said. I said, ah, that's true, that's true. People aren't gonna go and tell people about Jesus, so, but they will dress up like reindeer and sing, you know, way in the manger. So uh, let's do that instead. You know, and that was my mindset. And I think that's what the church, that's where the church went wrong. No, instead we should look at those people and know you've got the Spirit of God. He promises that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit falls upon you and you will be His witnesses. That you're called, it's everything we're talking about, you're called to make these disciples. Man, and for that reason, it's like, man, ever since youth group, it's like, wait, bring your friends, bring your friends, bring your friends. Let the youth pastor speak to them. You know, bring your friends to this event at our college campus, and we're going to bring in a speaker. Bring your friends to the Sunday service. And pretty soon we have a generation of people who don't know how to share the gospel. Man, we have a generation where the thought of like looking at your neighbor and and having a conversation, looking another human being in the eyes and telling them the way to escape the horrors of what David was talking about and, and the way to know Jesus, to be able to share the most important thing in your life. I mean, how many people who gather on a Sunday, what percentage do you think actually share the gospel that week? or that year and isn't it just a little bit embarrassing that we can't look another human being in the eye and tell them the best news in the world and the most important thing in our lives yes these are the things that have to change they have to you know when i was in uh, china a few years back I was talking to a pastor who was a leader in the underground church. And, um, but then when there was a little bit more religious freedom, he decided to, you know, actually do church services, just like the Americans do. And uh, he started gathering like 2,000 believers in Shanghai, which I don't know had ever been done. But then, of course, the government came in, shut it down and he got arrested and then they had to go back underground again but he told me he goes francis that was the greatest thing for our church he says when we got up and started doing services pretty soon i couldn't get anyone to do anything they just want to show up and listen to a sermon i go well duh you know why'd you copy us we're screwed up you know and he said, we lost our whole DNA. And then when we were forced back underground, it was so refreshing. He goes, because the Chinese church, the underground church, which grew to, you know, some say a hundred million or more. Okay, people go, well, that's only because they were persecuted or this or that. I'm like, no, it's because they actually believe that they could make disciples and they could start these gatherings and, and that, that Jesus was enough. And he says, man, when we got back, we got our DNA back. Because he says that the, the, the underground church was built upon these five pillars. He says, number one, we were devoted to the word of God. Everyone was devoted to the word of God. Number two, we were deeply devoted to prayer, committed to prayer. Number three, we expected every single believer to be out sharing the gospel. Number four, he says, there was a regular expectation of miracles. We believe when we pray, things were gonna happen. And then he said, number five, he says, we embraced suffering for the glory of Christ. Hey, what's up guys? So that message from Francis Chan was so, so relevant and so necessary for today. As the church, we need to hear this message, guys. I mean, we all should be out there sharing the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ with everybody that we can because it's our duty and responsibility. Now, if you look at Ephesians 4, it tells you very plainly. Let's check it out. Ephesians chapter 4, verse uh, 11. It says, 
And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. If we look at that, and right before that it says that Jesus gave gifts to men. So a ministry leader, a teacher, a pastor, an evangelist, a, a prophet, we are gifts to the body of Christ. If you know what a gift is, I'm sure you do, or we know that a gift is something that is given without having to pay for it, right? Given to somebody for their benefit, for their enjoyment, for them to get something out of it, right? So if Jesus says that he gave us, he gave the body of Christ leaders, right? The pastors and evangelists and prophets and apostles. That means they're for our benefit. They're for the, the body of Christ, the regular believers benefit. And what is that benefit supposed to be? It says to equip the saints for the work of ministry. It doesn't say that the pastor and apostle and the evangelist are to do the work of ministry or our gifts to do the work of ministry, their gifts to equip every believer, every Christian, every saint, for every saint, for every Christian to do the work of ministry, right? So the, the pastor and the apostle and the prophet, they're supposed to edify the body of Christ so that the body of Christ can start doing ministry as it's supposed to do. Jesus said, be my witnesses, preach the gospel in all the nations, right? You shall be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Let your light shine. Let your good works be seen so that the Father can receive the glory. The Bible says it's God's will for all to come to repentance, for all to come to the knowledge of the Son, for all to come to the faith, for all to be saved. Amen. So, it's just so important. So here's two quick things we got to get out of this video. Number one, if you're a leader, if you're a pastor, remember that you're not supposed to be the only one preaching the gospel to believers or unbelievers. You're not supposed to um, just preach nice sermons to the point where nobody in your congregation is, is leading people to Christ in their own time, in their own neighborhood, in their own workplace, right? with their own influence. If we're truly doing what we're supposed to be as leaders, we are uh, gonna see the people that we disciple, the people that we train, we're gonna see them doing the work of ministry. They're, we're not gonna be telling them, oh yeah, bring them, to, bring them to the service and I'll share the gospel. Bring them to this, bring them to that. No, if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing as leaders, we're supposed to be equipping people for them to lead people that they know that will never step foot in our church. Then they are the ones supposed to be sharing the gospel with unbelievers. They're the ones supposed to be doing ministry outside of the church. And then when they make disciples, then maybe those new disciples will join our church and we can all get to know each other. But until that point, listen, the people that we equip are supposed to be that equipped to do the work of, of, of a ministry. If we really think they're anointed, and you know, I hear so many pastors say, come on guys, you have, to, you have to believe this congregation, you're anointed, you have the Holy Spirit congregation, you, are, you have a purpose for God congregation, then if you believe that your congregation really has a purpose and it's called an anointed and has the Holy Spirit and is able to preach the gospel, then stop telling them that all they can do is stack chairs for you, carry your podium for you, clean the bathrooms for you, watch the kids and the babies in the kids and the nursery rooms for you. Stop telling them that they're anointed and then you're not equipping them to preach the gospel in their sphere of influence. You understand that leader? You understand that, right? So if you really believe that your congregation is anointed and it's called to serve the Lord, then equip them to do just that. Serve the Lord outside of the church. Like Christians are supposed to be the light of the world, not the light within the light within the light. Let's get serious. Amen? Number two thing we got to get out of this is if you are a believer, stop thinking that all you're going 
um, to church for is to hear a sermon that could encourage you and comfort you and it's all about you so that you can just go through your week in peace and, and you can survive your job and survive your spouse and survive your troubles and issues. Remember, you're going to the church to get equipped with the word of God so that you can actually serve the one you call Lord, so that you can actually fulfill your purpose and duty and really live for God by doing his work everywhere you go as his witness, as his preacher. You may not be called to be an, an apostle, a pastor, an evangelist, and prophet, but you are definitely, absolutely, 100% called to be his witness. And that's what you got to have in your mind. Every time you go to church, every time you go to Bible study, every time you assemble with the saints, every time you hear some preaching and teaching, remember that you're trying to be trained. You're trying to grow up into Christ. You're trying to be equipped so that you can fulfill your purpose as a witness of Jesus. Okay, just remember the goal, guys. If all, like Francis Chan, if all we can do is stack chairs, or all we can do is dress up like a like a donkey, or dress up, you know, like a like you know, like somebody in a manger, and, and dress up like like you know, like Mary, and dress up like Joy. If that's all we can do, then we're not really being equipped. We must be able to present the gospel and to lead people to Christ wherever we go. Every believer should be sharing the gospel. So share the gospel today, please, guys, because God didn't fill you with his spirit for you to just attend, for you to sit down on a pew, for you to invite somebody to church because the pastor's anointed. No, no, no. We've been anointed with the Holy Spirit. What can the Holy Spirit in you and through you do? Come on. Jesus said, you will carry my ministry of reconciliation. The same work shall you do. Who was he talking to? His followers, his disciples. Are you his follower? Let's grow. If you like this video, please like it. Hit like on there. Give me a comment. Ask me a question. Tell me how you feel about this topic and about this message. If you like this video and you feel like I'm helping you grow, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's for the equipment of the saints. Amen. So subscribe to this YouTube channel and support it. It's free. Come on. If, 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 if you have any other questions, just leave a comment. Um, and uh, I guess I'll see you next time, guys. I hope that this helps you um, get a better perspective of what you're supposed to do as a believer and as a regular believer. And I say regular with the with the understanding that you are a, just not a pastor, not an evangelist, and this and that. Well, you're not so regular compared to the world. You are a follower of Jesus, a child of God, and you have his spirit. You have a message to share with the world. So let it be heard. You're, reg you're regular in the terms of you're not a pastor or you're not, you know, called to be a leader in the ministry. But you're not regular because you're supposed to tell the world about the Savior of the world. And that's your Lord, your King Jesus. He commanded us to share the good news. So share it. Let's stop being self let's stop being scared let's stop being comfortable let's do the work of the ministry because the only reason there's a pastor in your church the only reason there's an apostle and a prophet and all these titles the only reason is so that you can actually do the work of ministry if if you're not doing the work of ministry why even have pastors why even have evangelists why even have these these people that we categorize as the as the five full come on the five full ministry Let's, we got to do the work. Let's get serious. We got to do the work. Amen. Bless you guys. If you want a great evangelism tool, check out our free prayer t-shirts. They're $15 each and they will surely help you in reaching out to those around you. You're basically walking around with a t-shirt that offers free prayer to those around you with no strings attached. The link is on the description below and I promise you, they will bless you by helping you bless those around you.